Hi, everybody. Diane here at Heartfelt Creative. Welcome to this edition of the Quilting Library. I hope you all are doing well and enjoying your stitching time whenever that is, maybe a little bit each day, maybe once a week you get to stitch. Whenever that is, I hope you're having a good time. This week, I'm bringing back a block to you. I did it oh, a year and a half or so ago over on my Facebook channel, but it, in all honesty, is one of my favorites. So I wanted to do it as a video here on the Quilting Library and to share it all with you. And it's a block that I call a nested block. You may have seen it by other names. I think it goes by other names, but it's this block right here. And I know you're thinking, oh my gosh, that looks kind of intense. There's a lot of small pieces there. Can I tell you that it's like a magic block? It's so simple. It's actually a great beginner block. And if you are an experienced piecer and quilter, this is the kind of block, if today is Monday and you need to give a baby gift on Friday, you can get that quilt done in that amount of time. I'm talking from piecing to quilting and binding. You can get this done by Friday pretty easily, even if you only have a couple of hours each day of the week to do it. It's not a difficult block at all. I'll show it to you again. And this is one of those blocks. I know you can tell just from looking at this single block that does something that I love so much in my quilting. And that is it makes a secondary pattern as you go. So let me flip the camera real quick. You can see here I have two blocks. So when you make this, you always make this in sets of two. You'll see that as we go. But look right here how this is making a chain going this way. It's making another chain going this way in the opposite colors. It's making a chain going this way and one going this way. So you get all kinds of pattern, but look right here is your secondary pattern. You're going to get, when you add another set to this, you're going to get this cross pattern here in the lights and this cross pattern here in the dark. So it's gonna go light, dark, light, dark, and you're gonna get a whole nother pattern going um, with this block. That's why I love it. So this uh, block is a very, um, jelly roll friendly. And you can see I have a whole jelly roll that I've already undone. I've already been picking block or strips from it. So you need, you can use a jelly roll or any two and a half inch strips. If you want to cut your strips from your um, yardage, feel free to do that. Um, you start out with two center blocks that are four inches. So other than your two and a half inch strips, you're going to need four inch by four inch center squares, okay? Now that's not four and a half inch, that's four inch because your centers when you finish them in your base blocks are three and a half inches. You'll see that here in just a moment. But this is super simple. And I know you're thinking, oh, I'm gonna have to cut out all these little pieces and all these little pieces. No way, there's, there's a trick to it. There's a little magic involved here. Don't we all love when our quilting and our piecing of our blocks has that magic into it to make it look like you've spent hours drudging over your squares and your cutting when only you know that you didn't. And let me show you how that works right now. Let me set these aside and bring in what I call the base blocks. So as you see, we have two blocks here. One is a dark light, one is a medium dark combo. So you're going to need three fabrics in total. You're going to need a light, a medium, and a dark. And so what I've done is in this particular set, I have used um, some, I've made my strips from some yardage, and I've also used a pre-cut uh, two and a half inch strip from a jelly roll. So you can mix and match your two and a half inch strips however you want. And I strip piece mine. And what that means is I start out with my square. I, I have a strip. Let me just grab one right here. And I stitch, flip and cut and go. Some folks don't like to use this technique because they think it ends up making things too out of square, but that's why we have square rulers. And to be honest, when I learned this technique I'm gonna show you today, 
I had already been quilting for about 20 some years uh, through hand piecing. The strip piecing technique was the first technique I learned to do by machine and I have loved it ever since. Um, so you're not going to have to with this technique measure everything and cut tiny strips and then cut bigger strips, not at all. But you're going to start out with two base blocks and those base blocks are basically square in a square in a square, square in a square in a square. Easy peasy, right? Yeah, it really is. Um, that's why this um, is so great for beginners. And when we have these made, when we cut them apart, that's when that magic happens. So you're going to start out with a light center or a dark center. And then this center is also your outer square. And on this one, this lighter center is also your outer square. So you use two colors per block, but you need three colors in total. So one, two, and three. Okay. All right, so let's set these aside for the moment and let's bring in that four inch center square. Now I started out here with the darker fabric, that's fine. I am, yep, right there is my four inch. So I'm going to bring in some two and a half inch strips. I'm going to bring in, this is all from that same jelly roll as the other ones. Here's a strip and I'm going to use this. So this is going to end up being my dark and medium block on this one. So let me bring in my rotary cutter and I'm going to cut off my salvage over here on my strip. There we go. And you know, that salvage is so nicely blended and you really couldn't hardly tell there's a salvage there. Sometimes I might even just so use that salvage. It, it doesn't make a huge difference to me. I'm gonna do a little pressing on my strip because it's a little wrinkly from being in its box. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna line these up on the edge. Now you can see here, this has a zigzag edge or a pinked edge, you might call it. And so you need to decide when you use an edge like this, is the edge of your fabric going to be considered this edge right out here that, or the top of the zigzag? Or are you going to consider the bottom of the zigzag your edge? Once you decide, you need to make sure that you do that with every piece that has a pink edge for this particular block. Otherwise, it's, it is going to get out of square and out of um, measurement for you. So I always use the very top every time. So I'm going to actually do it right here on this side because this is the first side I'm going to sew. So I'm going to take this over to the machine and I'm going to sew a quarter inch right down this um, right down this line. And I'm not going to cut this until later. So I've got all of my um, two and a half inch strip here, but we're just going to go sew this a quarter of an inch from here to the end. Let's flip our camera over and let's go over to the sewing machine. Now, if you've seen the first episode of this week's two-part series for Sewing Common Sunday, then you know right now I'm sitting at my IKEA sewing desk with my bank of drawers. Now, in that video that I showed you, the top of the one in the video has a white top. When I got mine, um, I went to that treasure room I tell you about in the video, and they had this whole desk in there uh, set aside. I got the whole thing for like $30. That was the bank of drawers and the top. And the top was this kind of a gray color, which I actually like. It's kind of a taupey gray. All right, so I am set up with um, an 8012 Microtech sharp needle. That's my needle of choice when I piece. And I'm using a two and a half inch stitch length and I'm using Orafil uh, 40 weight thread in a, in a like a dove gray. All right, so I'm all set up, needle down, and I'm gonna sew my quarter inch seam. 
Now, where do I stop? Because, you know, my fabric keeps going here. I can feel right here and I can see right there where my fabric ends. And if I go just the tiniest bit past, doesn't matter. Okay, so we're gonna, whoops, cut that. You know, I'm playing a little bit of bob and roulette here today. We'll see if I win or lose on this one. <laughs> Because that bobbin is pretty empty. All right, so we're going to come back over to here. And now I am going to press and cut off the extra from this particular piece. So let's flip our camera again. Here we go. All righty, so here is my piece that I've so I'm going to set my seam. I'm going to use my uh, seam piecing. Um, you know what did I? No, it's all there. Okay, thought maybe it already lost that Russian roulette. The bobbin roulette. I couldn't see. I'm going to flip this over nicely. Press. And when you sew like this. That's, it really helps to use these clappers to get that seam nice and flat. And if you're wondering what that is, go check out one of my first couple of Good Gadget uh, episodes and I talk all about it. Now, I am going to take and line this up, grab my ruler, and I'm going to lay it right on the edge. I'm going to make sure it's all completely lined up. I know some people that piece just think this is the worst technique, and I don't know why, because the woman that taught me how to use it taught me from a book that was really a fantastic book. So, and I'm going to cut that right off. Now I'm there. Now, what I'm going to do is take and put this on this edge. I'm going to give that a little press there. I'm going to put it on this edge. And we're going to do the same thing. Let's flip our camera over. We'll go back over to our sewing machine. Just lining up my edges. It kind of came apart. You could always pin if you wanted to. Because this is a really short seam, I don't bother, but my edges fall apart. I needed to put them back together. Snip my threads and we'll go back over to the overhead camera now and we'll do the same thing that we did before. Our cameras back over to our overhead. There we go. All righty. We bring in our mat. I'm going to set my seam. Whoops, I'm going to use my conditioning pen for my seam. You don't have to use this, but I really love it. It really helps you get your seams nice and flat. My seams were never flatter than when I started using that um, precision piecing pen. And that wasn't, you know, too horribly long ago. All righty, nice and flat. I'm going to bring it back over to the cutting part of my table. And now this time I'm going to make sure that my ruler is not just lined up with this part and the part I'm cutting, but all the way down, the whole piece is lined up together. That way I'm going to get the most precise cut I can. And there we go. And now we're started. Let's bring in our base block and show you that again. And now we're on our way. We've done that part right in the center of the block. And so as you can see, all we're going to do is we're going to continue with the same strip. And we're going to now do one on this side. 
and one on this side. And then we will have our center of our block. And then we're going to take this center fabric and do the same thing, short ends, long ends in this fabric. So when we're done, we end up with a base block that looks like this. And then we take the other base block in the light and dark combination and we have our two base blocks. Simple, right? Very simple. So you just have basically one, two, four, five, six. So you have eight seams per block, eight straight seams, no curves, anything like that. All right, so I'm going to take my base blocks now and we're going to make sure they're all nice and trimmed up. This one needs to be trimmed just a little. I never trimmed it when I finished sewing. But if you need to trim up your blocks, you go right ahead and do so. And if they need to be pressed, give them a good press. So now here comes what I call the magic. You're going to fold your block in half, edge to edge. Make sure you get your edges lined up. I'm going to bring in my pressing mat. Make sure we have those edges lined up really nicely, precisely. You could measure this from the center, all of that, but this is a really easy way to do it. Fold it in half, give it a little press here, and give it a little press here. You don't need to press in the center. Then you're gonna open it up and you're gonna see your center lines right there. Now we're gonna fold it in half in the other direction. Line up our edges again, nice. Press and press on the other edge. And when we open it up, we have our centers here and our centers here. So what you wanna do now is take your ruler and center it up. I always try to center it up on a line on my mat just to make sure I'm getting right in the center on both sides. Then I'm all centered up. And here comes the magic. Cut one. Now, if you have a rotating mat, now's the time to use it. If not, just put your hands on both sides and hold them, hold everything together and give it a 90 degree turn. And then we're going to line up again right on the center on this side and cut and look. We now have four individual blocks. Now can you see how we end up with our centers and all looking like we've done all that intricate piecing when doing it with the four cuts gives us our small center blocks and what looks like to be the more intricate piecing. So let's set these aside and let's cut the other base block. So I want to, set those over there, I want to do the same thing I did with the first base block and I want to mark my center spots. So I'm folding in half, pressing my edges just to get those marks. Then I'm going to go ahead and do it again from the other side. Press here and press here. And then I'm going to cut this into four pieces, just like I did with the last block. Now with this dark one, I have to be a little careful because it's a little hard to see where my centers are. Even though I press them nicely and I can see them, just make sure you're careful and get those centers. See, like right there, that's not the center. That's the center. There we go. One cut. Rotate it 90 degrees keeping everything together or use that rotating mat, which I should have gotten mine out and I forgot. My rotating mat for me is kind of an out of sight, out of mind thing. When I use it, I absolutely love it and adore it. And I always forget to get it out. Now we're going to cut this one the second time. So you're only doing two cuts per base block. 
And now we have four blocks like this in our other colorway. So now let's take out our corners, two diagonal corners, and let's put in two of the ones from the other combo. Look at that. That's your finished one. That's what it looks like as you're piecing it. Really easy, right? So now all you're gonna do is take and fold these over, stitch them quarter inch, everything is a quarter inch, flip these over and stitch them. And then you're going to take your sections and fold them on top of each other and sew them. And when you're done, you're going to finish with this block. And you're going to end up with a block that is, well, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten and a half, roughly ten and a half inches blocks. So that when you put these into a quilt, they're going to be 10 inch finished blocks, which makes a quilt coming together really quickly because they're not huge blocks, but they're not tiny blocks either by any means. So that is how you do. Let's flip our camera again. One more time. Oops, did I just do it? Okay, good, I got it. <laughs> um, that's how our nested blocks come together. It's just that simple. Now, you can put them, butt them right up against each other like I was showing you when I first flipped the camera. And then you can really see those secondary patterns. But if you want, you could put sashing between these blocks as well. You'd still see the pattern, but you'd see kind of even a different depth to it because of the sashing. That would be perfectly all right as well. So if you do some blocks or if you put together a quilt or a table runner, this would be a great simple table runner. Literally with four blocks, you could do a whole table runner with this and it would be gorgeous. So if you do any kind of block or a pattern with these blocks, please make sure and hashtag, uh, put the hashtag on your pictures, hashtag so beautiful, S-E-W beautiful H-C for Heartfelt Creative. So beautiful H-C. And if I find them out there when I go to look, then I will show folks them here on another episode of the Quilting Library. Have a great day, everybody. Go sew the world beautiful. Go sew life beautiful. Have a great day. See you next week on the Quilting Library. Bye now.